In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your rear engine mount. That's the one that goes up against the firewall all the way down. Let's get started. We actually have to lift the engine up. So to do that, we have to unbolt the engine mount that sits here, which is actually the transmission mount, loosen up both front and rear mounts. In order to get to the transmission mount, we actually have to remove the battery, the battery tray, and move the air box out of the way. So I'll start by removing this brace for the battery. This is just a J hook here. So to unhook it, you just push it down and sideways and then it'll come out. Then use a 10 millimeter socket, remove the negative battery terminal first, loosen up this nut that clamps it down. Once the terminal's loose, pull it up and move it out of the way back here where it can't make connection and We'll do the same to the positive. That way we can completely remove the battery and get it out of our way. Remove the battery. Remove the battery tray, which is just a plastic piece that sits down there. Then let's loosen up this clamp. Be careful with these. As you can see, I already sprayed it with some rust penetrant, but these break often. Use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen that up. Now let's unclip the clips that hold the top of the air box in. Pop that out. I'm not going to remove it completely. I'm just going to set it aside over here. Remove the air filter. This is a good time to check it and inspect it. Looks like it's pretty clean except for some leaves. So take those out of here. Inside the air box, there are three 10 millimeter bolts that hold this down. Remove all three. Now you can simply lift this up and out. The air inlet pipe is attached here, but this just pops off as you twist it out of here. Okay. And now we have a lot more space to work with. Remove this wiring harness. It just has a little clip here that you can pry up. Now to make things easier, I just want to unbolt the four 14 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket onto the frame rail. And that is because if I do this, the engine will still sit here. As you can see, it's curved around and I don't have to support anything. Whereas if I unbolt the center bolt, which yes, it's only one instead of four, it will, it's gonna wanna drop down. Then I have to line everything back up. So personally, I think this will be more efficient in the long run. I'm gonna start with the two up top. And then there are two on the sides. And the last one is on the back side over here. Okay, this one's unbolted. Now from underneath, let's loosen up the front engine mount. This is the one that sits underneath your fan. And there are two 14 millimeter bolts that go up through these two holes. That's it, that's all that holds that on. I'm just unbolting it off of the frame here so that it can still have a, an area to sit on and it'll just go up as I raise up the engine. 14 millimeter bolts. And let's do the same to the engine mount in the back, which is that one right there. You can't see a lot of it, but this is one of the fasteners. This is another one. And then one through each of these holes. Also 14 millimeter for all of these. I'm gonna support the engine with a jack. I'm gonna put it right there on the transmission, on the aluminum part. Do not put it on the transmission pan or the engine oil pan. Those are not to be jacked up on. As you'll notice, I have a rubber pad, which will protect that surface from uh, being damaged by the metal jack. Give it a couple pumps, just enough to release pressure off of the engine mounts. Use a 17 millimeter socket. Slide it down in here, and the nut on the other side of this bolt is actually welded, so you don't need to hold it or anything. It'll uh, stay in place as you loosen this. There we go. Gotta go down. Take this bolt out. Now let's lift up on this engine mount here. Now I'm back underneath because the engine mount is actually seized in here. I believe that either this stud or a combination of this one and a couple other ones 
are just stuck inside the subframe and it won't break free. So I'm gonna take a hammer, try to hammer it up. You can see it right here. This is the engine mount. Uh, so we can watch it break free when it does. I'm pretty sure the rear is broken free because I can feel a little bit of movement, but the front feels like it's bolted on there and it's not. It's just that it's seized in the subframe. There we go. That just popped free. So it was that stud. But now since we're here, let's double check these. And yep, that's free. All right, so let's go back up top and remove the mount. And now that it's broken free, we can raise it up. Now remember you have that long stud down there, so we're gonna have to raise it up quite a bit before it can clear. And uh, it looks like this bracket is going to be in our way. So we're gonna have to unbolt it. Okay. That's completely out of there. I guess the trick is to just jack up the engine just enough to where you can have enough clearance, but then pull it forward. And now down here, we'll have to use a 14 millimeter. And I'm gonna start by removing this bolt. These are gonna be pretty tight, so make sure you have a long breaker bar or ratchet to break these free. Once they're broken free, it shouldn't take a lot to keep them spinning. There's one of them. There's another one that you can't really see, but it's all the way down there. Okay, there's bolt number two. And the last one is going to be this one right here. That's the trickiest one to get to just because of its location. At this point, I think it would benefit us to take off the wheel because I think we can reach this bolt here through the wheel well. So let's do that. Let's remove the wheel, 21 millimeter socket, remove all five of your lug nuts, and then pull the wheel off. Take the wheel off. We can, uh get a wrench on there and hopefully we can break it free. Okay, it moved, that's progress. <clears throat> okay, can't go far with this ratchet. Okay, now let's see if a ratcheting wrench will do the rest of the job. Otherwise the ratchet will get jammed up between the steering rack and that bolt. There's the third bolt. And now we can move this bracket out of the way, whether you remove it completely or just leave it there, it's up to you. And now we can remove this mount. And there it is. There's your mount. Take your new mount and make sure that it has this rubber protector here on the side where it's closest to the exhaust. So this is how it's gonna sit down there. And uh, this basically just protects this rubber from being damaged over time from the heat. Slide it down the same way that you took it out. It's not gonna be the easiest, but of course it's doable. Okay, so it's down there. Get it out of the way like that because we have to obviously reattach that bracket. Here's a good view before I put this in of where the bolts need to go. One here and two over here. So let's get this bracket repositioned. And the first bolt's gonna be the most difficult one to line up because you're gonna have to hold the bracket while you start the bolt in. So just keep that in mind. While I'm here, let's try to get this top one started. Yeah, this one caught. And I get this one close. Try to get this one a little closer too. And let's put the last one in. And that's gonna be this one on the bottom here. The torque for these is 47 foot-pounds, but there's no way I'm gonna get a torque wrench down here. So I'm just gonna make them nice and tight with my ratchet. Let's 
that's one. Okay, that's tight. Oh, nice and tight. Now we can position this engine mount into its mounting holes on the subframe. Just like that. Make sure it's in on all four of them. All right, let's slowly let the engine down and we'll see how it lines up. Now I'm going to take the mounting bolt that goes through and since it lines up, I'm gonna slide it through completely. That way I secure its position in here and uh, then we can adjust from there. Try to start it in a few threads. The torque for this is 48 foot-pounds, but I can't torque it because I can't get any swing out of my torque wrench here because of the limited amount of space I have. So I'm going to tighten it up with my air gun. Again, 48 foot-pounds is the torque if you want it to torque it. Okay, there you have it. Let's put back the two mounting bolts for this front mount. Make sure you start them by hand so they don't cross thread. Bottom these out and torque them to 38 foot-pounds. Now let's reinstall the mounting hardware for this rear mount. There was a mounting nut over here on this stud and then two nuts going through these holes and then the bolt going through this hole. Let's snug these all up and torque them to 38 foot-pounds. Now it's time to put these bolts back. I'm gonna start the ones underneath first because they line up the best. And then for these, I'm gonna have to just lift up on this bracket a little bit. They line up, but because the weight of the engine is uh, pulling it down, I don't want it to cross thread. We'll bottom out the two top ones first and then we'll put those in. This one I can't torque, so right off the bat, I'm just gonna take a long wrench and make sure that it's nice and tight. The rest of them, I'm going to torque to 47 foot-pounds. And that torque would have applied to this one too if I could, but like I said, I can't get to it. Those are all tightened down. Let's put the lower half of the air box in. Make sure you connect it to this intake duct that comes out of the fender area. Clip it in, line up the bolt holes, and let's put the bolts in. Make sure this is nice and secure and doesn't wobble around. Put your air filter back. Make sure it's facing the right way. You don't want the dirty side up so that all the dirt would be sucked up into the engine. Obviously put the dirty side down. Put back the top of this, slide it back into the intake ducting here. Make sure you line up these tabs here. If you don't line these up, the air box will not seal up and uh, you'll know because you won't be able to clip these in. And if you force them and close them like that, well, you'll have issues where air gets drawn in. Tighten this clamp up. Okay, make sure that's nice and secure. Put back the battery tray. It has an arrow indicating the front of the vehicle, so make sure you put it in that way because this little notch has to line up with the support underneath it. Otherwise, this will move around and that would not be safe. There we go, just like that. And now let's place the battery on top of that. Reconnect the battery, do the positive first, then the negative. Now let's tighten up these clamps. Try not to over tighten these, but as long as your terminal doesn't move around, it's good. And do the same to the negative, nice and snug, doesn't move. Let's put the battery hold down bracket in. This J hook at the back, make sure you hook it into its hole. And at the front, put the front bolt in. Let's tighten both of these down. I like to tighten the front first because this one you just tighten until it's bottomed out. 
and you do your adjustment on this one where it can basically pivot higher or lower depending on how tight you need to clamp this. Obviously don't crush the battery. As long as it's snug in here and it can't move around, you know you're good. If you have one of these covers, cover up the terminal. Now let's put the wheel on. And double check them. And there you go, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.